Welcome to the Volume Teacher Resource, and so our goal of what we're trying to do with this video is give teachers a strategy or um, kind of show how we introduce the topic of volume um, when we're teaching. And so obviously this goes along with our volume song we just released, and there is also a, uh, st a student instructional video for anybody who's doing playlists. We, you know, we invite you to link our YouTube page to your playlist so your students can watch that. Um, now everybody has different ways to do things and so your way may be better than ours or you might want to try our way and that's fine, right? Because teacher, part of teaching is stealing good ideas from each other. And so this is, um, I'm going to quickly go over our smart board lesson plans for our first two days of introducing volume and then an activity that we use with the sheet that we do it with. And so the first thing we talk about is how we go back in time all the way to fourth grade and we talk about how in third and fourth grade we do perimeter and area and really dive into that in fourth grade if you're doing common core for us in North Carolina standards and so we talk about how when we're doing area we are actually right measuring it in square units so you would write down square units right here and then you can kind of click and drag this and you know we're talking about how when we're doing area we're trying to figure out the space inside of a 2d shape how many squares would it or square units would it take to cover that rectangle or 2D shape until the entire square is full. Um, and then you could talk, right, obviously about what area was and just kind of as a reminder and as a building block for what they're going to be doing today. So then we introduce volume um, and we talk about, first of all, we have them write down the definition of volume. And, you know, th there's probably different definitions you can use but we're trying to relate it as much as we can to previous knowledge they have. So we talk about how volume is the space inside of a 3D shape instead of a 2D shape. And in fifth grade, we're going to be talking about rectangular prisms. And so we show them a couple examples. And instead of measuring with square units, well, the 3D version of a square would be a cube. So we measure in cubic units, right? And we kind of talk about these two pictures. and how you're trying to fill this empty box with cubes, that would be the volume, or sometimes they give you these um, pictures that you can very clearly see the cubes. And so that's our first definition. Um, and then we kind of get to know our new friend, the rectangular prism, and we have this picture right here in their notes. And so then we label the height and the width, I'm sorry, the height and the length and the width. And then we talk about the area of the base. And so that's just the term that we're going to be using later. And so we talk about, okay, how in a rectangular prism, the front and back are the same, the two sides are the same, and the top and bottom are the same. So the area of the base of the bottom rectangle will be the same as the area of the top, right? And you could even, um, if you're using this, right, you could even get your highlighter out and you could highlight and talk about how the area of the top and how it's the same as the area of the base. And... So then, we, the first day what we actually do is we are introducing them to an activity. We're introducing them to this topic and we're trying to let them discover as much as they can on their own. So we are going to a volume museum today and, up around, and I'll show you what we have set up around the room in a second, but we have different stations set up around the room and they're going to walk around the museum and they're going to look at different rectangular prisms that we made out of snap cubes, which again, I'll show you in a second, and they're going to be answering uh, these three questions and actually they are going to be answering a little bit more than that they're going to be answering what is the area of the base what is the height what is the length and what is the width so they'll be answering these five questions for each of their pictures and that's all we're telling them we're not giving them the volume formula yet we're trying to let them discover as much as possible okay and so what they're going to do is they're going to be looking at these snap cubes right here and we have a couple of these set up around the room okay and they're going to look at these and let's say this would be station a so i'd have a paper with it and i you know i'd make a name up like petrified poop or something i don't know kids like poop and they'll laugh about that or whatever and so they're going to come up here and then using this sheet right here they're going to uh, go to structure one and without touching it, so the rules are they can't touch it, they have to figure out, count the width, they have to count the, uh, you know, count how many layers there are, so when we talk about height, we're, we, especially the first couple days, use the word layers, because we're using layers of cubes, what the length is, 
and then they have to try to count the area of the base or somehow come up the area of the base. Our kind of high flyers will obviously be thinking length and width already so they don't have to count as much. Um, but really, however they want to count the area of the base, and again, if they can't see the base, what we tell them, right, is to look at the top. And so we're talking about that. And then they're going to, oops, I don't know what I just did. There we go. They're going to be using all this information to try to figure out the volume or how many cubes make up the shape, right? So we have four different ones, and then we have a challenge one. So let me show you the four different ones we might start with as an example. So obviously here would be the first one, and they'd come up here, and they'd say, okay, well, you know, without touching it, the length is one, two, three, four, five units. The width is two units. And then they can't see the base, but they can just count the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squared units is the area of the top, which means it's also the area of the base. So then we might give them a different one. Let me take this one out. And they might have one that's just like this, right? And it's good to show them that there might only be one layer, but this is still a rectangular prism. So the width would be one. They'd count the length, right? Again, count the area of the base, which is the same as the area of the top, and they'd be able to do that. And then we want to give them kind of a bigger one. And so we give them a bigger one. And the reason we give them this bigger one is because we don't want them to try to count all the cubes individually every time. We're trying to push them to use, um, to basically figure out the formula without us having to tell it. So again, and I tape these because they kind of come apart, especially, you know, you have that one kid who's going to knock it over and it's going to break. So go ahead and tape it. Um, and so, right, they count the length, count the width, same thing. And again, they're, when they're counting the height, they're focused on the layers because, uh, as we all know, what we're trying to get them to do is figure out how many are in the top layer, right, by counting the area of the, uh, the, the base, which would be the same as the top, and then multiplying or just, you know, doing repeated addition right there, right? So we're trying to get them to get that. And then the challenge one at the very end, right, is we introduce a irregular prism and we make it two different colors so it's easy to break apart and they have to do both set of questions for the brown and the yellow right and this could be a fossil of some sort or alien or maybe an old cell phone like you know back they had back in the early 90s i don't know you can make something up on the paper so they enjoy it and then they obviously they have to figure out they have to add the two volumes together and again we're trying to get them to discover that on their own and without us really doing too much of the heavy lifting, but in a fun activity where they're walking around the room. So we'll give them like three minutes at each station, and then we'll rotate. Um, and then, if, you know, obviously you might have like, I don't know, a separate math question or something for those kids who get done early, because we know that idle time is trouble time, uh, especially when we're talking about students, because, um, you know, look at teachers at staff meetings and what they're doing when there's downtime, right? So. That's what we do. We have them walk around the room, and again, they're filling out this sheet right here, right? And so you can see all the different structures we do, and then the challenge question where they have to add it up. And then we have a spiral review, but, you know, that has nothing to do with this. We just always like to go back and spiral review. So then we'd go back to the smart board, right? And we ha we've left this up, and then we switch over here, and this would maybe be the challenge exhibit the same Maybe you make this picture or you make the snap cubes to match this picture exactly and you talk about how you could do it on the drawing. And that's the, uh, we talk about at the end of some key takeaways. So sometimes some classes will get to the fact that, you know, they'll come up with the volume formula without really knowing it. And sometimes they don't and they just had fun counting cubes and either one's fine as long as they recognize that volume is how many cubes are in it and that length, width, height, and area of the base is somehow important to it. So then the second day we come and we just review what this is and then we, we talk about okay today we'll be able to find the volume of rectangular prism by counting the cubes so same objective but now it's going to be on paper so we're going to do questions like this and so I always like to have a quote up here that has to do with you know what we're doing so we, we're giving them the three steps now to find the area we're not calling it the formula but we're just kind of introducing what we talked about yesterday because at the end of the day, hopefully we've come to this conclusion that this is the fastest way to do it. And so then we, I do a problem with them, right? And so I'm taking my highlighter maybe and I'm just highlighting, you know, the top and how, again, that's the area of the base. And then we talk about how many layers we have. And so we count the layers, which would be the height. And then we skip count and or multiply, you know, we come up with the volume. 
So then what we do is we give them an independent practice and we have them do the first two problems, then stop. So this is what the independent practice looks like for day two. So we have them do these first two problems. Okay, it's just like the thing yesterday, the sheet yesterday, except now there's pictures on it. We have them do the first two problems, stop. Okay, then we go back to the smart board and we talk about, okay, well, what have we been doing to solve for volume, right? And we talk about what a formula is. A formula is what we do every time to find something. And so what we've been doing is we've been taking the area of the base and multiplying it by the height. Okay, so that's our formula for volume, just like we talk about in our song. And so we have volume equals area of the uh, base times height. But then we also have been talking about, okay, well, instead of sometimes counting the entire area of the top, especially for the bigger pictures or the bigger structures that we did, you just found the length and the width. So really, if you're doing length times width, that's the same thing as the area, and then you're multiplying that by the height. So we introduce these two things as the formula for volume, and we really introduce that it's doing the same thing, right? Because length times width is the area. So then we, I do one, okay, using this formula, and so I'd break it apart, and I'd use my different color markers so all the colors match up. I think that's super important for kids to see that. If we write in all the same colors, sometimes it's hard to make that connection. Um, I use my highlighter to highlight, right? I do all of those things. And then, oops. And then I have them come, go back to their worksheet, and I have them do C by themselves, right? So just they, they're doing one problem using the formula by themselves. Again, we have some spiral view, which is neither here nor there for right now. And then we go back, and I have a challenge zone problem, okay? And so, oops. And so we do a, that's, we don't do surface area for everybody, uh, but I have, I bring in a cardboard box and we find the volume of a cardboard box together using a meter stick, right? And so now we've taken it from uh, hands-on with the snap cubes to the same type of picture on paper. So we're scaffolding it. And then just for, we do one problem as a class together with a box so we can see that the math we're doing you can actually use in real life. And fun fact, the dimensions of a box are on the bottom. So instead of measuring, you could just use the dimensions on the box. But you're doing it together. Um, and then, I don't know, we like Mortal Kombat sometimes, so we just talk about going to finish all the work we haven't finished. And so that's how we introduce volume. Um, that is how we do uh, the first couple days and introduce the formula, trying to allow them to discovered on their own, but then also guide them in their thinking and then scaffold it for them. As always, please check us out on YouTube at Channel Instructed Beats. Follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. If you would like the smart board that I used, you can email us at instructedbeats at gmail.com. I'd love to share that and send that to you, or we can even share our independent, independent practice with you um, through Google Drive or you know download as a PDF. Please subscribe to our YouTube page. That is very helpful to us. Um, and also check out our volume song to help your kids kind of remind or to uh, remember what they've been learning with volume. And also there is the student video for volume. Thanks a lot for checking this out. Instructor Beats out. <laughs>